What do you think um, Rishi Sunak will commit today when he does that joint meeting with President Zelensky? What hard military hardware do you think we're going to provide? Well, number 10, I've already said that we're going to give hundreds of air defence missiles and further uh, UAVs, that's unmanned aerial vehicles, but quite long range ones up to 200 kilometres. But he also mentioned that we will uh, make sure that the training programme for Ukrainian pilots is energised. That's interesting because, of course, at the moment, we haven't committed in the West to providing any military aircraft, particularly the F-16. And what's interesting about the statement is it does reference the F-16, which is an American plane, which the Royal Air Force doesn't have uh, twice. So that is what the ultimate capability, which is missing, that um, Zelensky wants from the West. And really, this meeting is the halfway point, because in the last uh, few days, he's met both uh, the German Chancellor, he's met the uh, French president, he's met uh, Ursula von der Leyen, uh, and he's met the Polish president. So they are all uh, amongst the major contributors. And this is the halfway point between those meetings and the G7 and Council of Europe meetings, where international solidarity to continue to resource Ukraine will be the main issue and will continue to be an issue which we will support them because this is an ethical and just war from a Ukrainian perspective. And is this, I was just, I'm sorry, but I was just say, is this all coming now, this, these pledges from all these European countries, uh, Ch Chapman, because we think Ukraine is about to launch a major counter-offensive against the Russians? I think what it tells you is that this isn't a one-shot weapon. We know that the war gaming which went on, certainly with General Kavoli, who's the Supreme Allied Commander of Europe with the Ukrainians, uh, meant that the equipment they've been given so far is enough for the forthcoming offensive. Now, there's a localised offensive at the moment in Bakhmut, uh, but not the uh, operational level, that is the level above tactics at the moment. So this really, uh, along with the American support last week, because they also gave another $1.2 billion, bringing their contribution to $30 billion, mm. is to sustain Ukraine for the long war should it come to that. But it could be there's also a very short war scenario, which is a psychological and military collapse of the Russians. And that is one of the theories of victory of the Ukrainians, that uh, military collapse leads to something akin to the 1905 and 1917 revolutions, that is sort of regime change in Moscow. Do you see that, Chip, as the only solution in terms of victory? And David Davis just echoed this as, a, as an idea, which is that the Russian troops become demoralised. To all intents and purposes, Russia lo are losing and Putin is deposed. Is there any other way that it could end satisfactorily for Ukraine? Well, we always talk about three things. It's the class fits the Trinity, either the army collapse and therefore you, you're campaigning uh, ceases. Uh, you either have elite defection, that is political change within the Kremlin, which overthrows uh, Putin, or you have the third variable, which is that the, the people revolt. Now, the information space means that that's not going to happen at the moment. But what was interesting from the, um, the Senate Armed Services Committee uh, a week ago was that unless Russia have mandatory mobilization, and can resource third-party ammunition from elsewhere, then they're going to be really, really uh, suffering in the future in trying to do anything other than hold their defensive lines. So it looks like, to me, that Ukraine will be in the ascendant in the next few weeks or months, and Russia would have to do something fairly significant with societal um, changes with mobilisation, and that is also a political risk for Putin.